everyone, it's Tracy coming to you live from Golden Dog Adventure Company headquarters. How are you? We have a really great lunch and learn for you today. My guest is Sarah Sokol. How are you, Sarah? I'm good. You said my name perfectly. That was oh, awesome. woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. <laughs> So guys, Sarah wears a number of hats and I really, Sarah is a fascinating person. I think you're going to think so as well because she started in one place and she has grown from there to meet a number of demands on the industry that she saw needed someone to solve. Um, so I love it when people start in the pet industry and they grow from there. So let me tell you a little bit about Sarah. So she is from Bath, Maine. So a little bit of a distance from us, but not too bad up in beautiful Northern Maine. She owns uh, Mr. Dog Training. And as I've heard, Mr. Dog Training actually is an award-winning company in Maine. Isn't that correct? Yes, I've won best in me in the past eight years. Oh, only eight years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice job, Sarah. Thank I love you. it. Thanks. Well, now, so you've been training for a number of years and you decided to get into the short term rental market. So you started Little White Dog Properties. So I'm just curious, what made you decide to get into that market? Did you see a need for people who were traveling with pets? Uh, yeah, so um, being a dog lover, um, I wanted to, when I decided to purchase a vacation rental, which had been kind of a dream of mine for a long time, I wanted to make sure that I was giving dogs just as great of an opportunity to be able to travel as people as well. Um, so when I was putting the house together, and the website together, my goal was to make sure that I was communicating to travelers that not only do I want you to stay in my house, I want your dogs to stay in my house too. And I want them to have just as good of a time as you are on your vacation. It was very important to me that it was, um, I was aiding in quality of life for dogs the same way I did in my dog training business. Um, and honestly, not even really thinking about that as being like a money making part of it or, or a promotional part of it. It was just kind of common sense to me to make sure I was including dogs since I love them so much. Um, but it turns out it's a big industry. Uh, so um, I 100% got on that bandwagon and then really wanted to make sure that I was advocating for people who are traveling with pets and trying to make it as easy as possible for them, starting with my own vacation rental. Yeah, and I have to agree with you there because for me, it's been so frustrating when you see properties as listed as dog friendly or hotels or Airbnbs, bed and breakfasts, anywhere, yet they have all of these restrictions, no dogs mm -hmm. on the beds, no dogs on the couches, don't leave dogs alone, um, no amenities for dogs. So, you know, the people that we, uh, you know, cater to as well as you are those people who see dogs as family. And if you can't take your family with you and treat them as family when they're on vacation for you, it's not a great vacation. So yeah. you've kind of taken it a start, step further. You say that you don't just allow dogs, you welcome them. And you've started a whole community around this called Dogs Welcome. Yeah. So I'm curious, can you describe to me a little bit about, you know, your perspective on dogs being welcome as opposed to just being allowed? Yeah. Um, so the word I think I always think of is like tolerated. I feel like sometimes dogs are tolerated in whether it be hotels or vacation rentals, short-term rentals, um, with, you know, massive amounts of fees that are involved with really ridiculous or, or strict rules that are involved, um, that are quite frankly, very difficult for a lot of pet guardians to be able to, to accommodate. Um, especially when those rules involve things like maybe not allowing your dog on the furniture, if that's something that they do at home. I'm not talking about ridiculous things like not cleaning up pee and poop, you know, if it were to happen in the house, but like little things like, like dogs being allowed on furniture. Um, and so, yeah, so I decided when I, when I realized that this was such a huge need um, that people were really looking for places that truly welcomed dogs that I, I wanted to be able to market this to as many different people as possible. And I've always been a fan of using Facebook groups to market anything, uh, any type of business thing that I'm, that I'm involved in. And I, so I started looking and there was nothing on Facebook in this country. I will say tons in the UK, but nothing in this country that was geared towards connecting travelers who are traveling with their pets 
and dog guardians or even other animal guardians um, and giving them a resource to kind of find those those properties so i started one so i decided to uh call it dogs welcome um Sarah, I'm actually going to pause you for just a minute because we're getting yeah. quite a bit of feedback. Again, Could you just try pushing your um, mouthpiece away yeah. from your mouth more? I'm wondering if that'll help. How's that? Yeah, I'm still getting it. I don't know why. Do you want me to so, try my settings again? Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no problem. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure people get a clear. Yeah, I wonder why it's changing. And guys, if you're listening, um, let us know. Are you getting that feedback too? Because if it's just me, I can deal with it. But I just want to make sure um, that we have a clear recording. So uh, let us know if you guys can uh, just comment with a thumbs up if it's clear to you or if you're hearing static. How's this? Any better for you? Yep. Yep. That's yeah. good for me. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's try uh, it. Okay. <laughs> let okay. me know if it starts back up again. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, and um, let me just, I got a comment here. Let's just see if yeah. somebody says, okay. So Cindy, you're hearing the feedback. Okay, but it sounds like it's better now, although I can, okay, Cindy says it's better. I can hear myself okay. on your end. Oh. Hmm. Isn't that strange? <laughs> Something I did. All right, Cindy, let us know if you're hearing my voice two times. I just want to get this figured out so we can have uh, good How's information. That? Is that better? That does seem like it's better. All right, good. All right, perfect. Okay. For good now, for my end. Cindy, give us a thumbs up if you... If you, th if you agree. All right. So, yeah. So you started the Facebook group Dogs Welcome. Yeah. And so when just let's create a timeline here. When was that created? Yeah. So uh, about February, March of 2022. Uh, oh, geez, I started. Okay. Yeah. So just about a year and a half ago. Um, it's grown quickly. It's grown quickly. Well, you know what happened is I contacted Shay Kelly, who runs the canine enrichment group. And I asked if I would be okay if I posted in this group you know, advertising that this new group existed and he was kind enough to allow me to do so. And that was when honest to goodness, I grew 1200 members in 24 hours wow. because of the post and canine enrichment. So that kind of kicked it off. And then, you know, the way that Facebook algorithms work, the more people who are joining, the more active a group is, the more they try to get people into it. So I think right. that was a huge uh, piece as to why um, that kind of, it, it's grown so quickly. And for some reason, there's been another huge burst in the past. We I had 300 people alone in the past week that had joined. Um, so yeah, so it is rapidly growing I, and I, I'm sure it will continue to do so. Um, but the, but the idea of the group is any property owner, manager, host that does allow, I don't define like there's no um, definition as to like, you have to allow dogs on the furniture, you have to allow a certain number of dogs to be a member of the group. As long as you do allow dogs in your property, you're welcome to be a part of the group. Um, and then it's obviously up to travelers to then, you know, ask questions as to whether or not um, those properties might have stricter rules than others. Um, I also encourage hosts to make sure they're advertising any sort of amenities or things that they do allow their pet travelers travelers to do that other uh, establishments might not. Um, but that also then spurred me to uh, create a website called the Dogs Welcome website, where uh, travelers can actually search uh, for properties um, using a set of filters that aren't really available on any other uh, search uh, platforms like Airbnb or Verbo um, or anything along those lines. And that will even more help people uh, narrow down a property that might be really suitable for what they're looking for. So some of the filters that you can search for on the Dogs Welcome website are properties that don't have a pet fee. So if you're not interested in paying pet fees, perfect. We can add that filter. A property that might allow two or more dogs. So if you're a multi-dog household and you have a hard time trying to find somewhere to stay with your three or four or six or 10 dogs, I can't guarantee 10. Six but or 10, <laughs> I love how you <laughs> The numbers just go up really fast. That's right. Um, you can add the two plus dogs welcome filter. I've got a filter for properties that allow cats in case there's some cat guardians out there. Love it. Properties that don't have any breed restrictions or size restrictions. I used to have an Irish wolfhound. I know the stigma that goes along with having a giant dog. I also know that they're probably the easiest, laziest, and like non-destructible dog out there. <laughs> yeah. They do nothing but lay down. <laughs> um, properties have fenced in yards, 
properties that allow other animals and properties that do allow dogs on furniture. So if those things are really important to you, then the website is a really nice way for you to filter your search so that you can find properties that do allow for those particular things. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, the other sites don't have those. And it is really helpful too, because unless somebody who's listed on Airbnb or Verbo has included that in their details, you don't know. Right. You, know, you have to have a conversation with them. You have to, you know, have some behind the scenes communication, but you're you're accounting for those things right now. Yeah. And one of the things that I find very interesting, and a lot of the feedback I get in the groups that I'm networking in is the uh the the pet fee. Mm. So it's interesting with when, when the market that we target who see dogs as family and want to travel with their furry family to make them pay additional for their dogs when their dogs aren't, you know, taking a shower, they're not using additional yeah. electricity, you know, all the different things that additional people, you know, would use. So actually we don't charge a pet fee at our Airbnb, but we do charge an additional person fee because yeah. that's really where the fees are connected. So I'm glad that you're yeah. sorting for that. I think that's really smart. Yeah, I think a lot of times cleaning is the is the reason why hosts will say that um, they're charging extra fees because there is extra cleaning involved. But the way that I see it is if you are generally people are so happy that they can bring their dogs with them and their dogs are so welcome to be there that if you provide them with very simple things like you know, old sheets to put on the, or nice sheets to put on the sofa before the dog lays down, a vacuum, um, you know, cleaning supplies in case there is an accident in the house. People use that stuff, You're right. you know, they'll use You're that right. stuff. They don't want to leave your house unless they're so grateful that they will use those tools. So a post provide those. I have personally found with my property that cleanup has not been an issue because of, because of dogs. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Same here. And we put covers on the, the bed and on the couches and yeah. provide different things yeah it, it can be easy you just yes. throw their cover off the couch into the uh wash and then put it back on for the next guest so i guess yes. Yeah. yes absolutely so still getting a little bit more feedback mm -hmm. not sure let me change off the headset how about we try okay. that yeah let's do that thanks for your patience guys we just want to make sure that you get a clear mm -hmm. interview here because sarah's got a lot of great information to share so just going to just do a quick check there. But let me just uh, throw up Sarah's website here, too, if you want to take a look at it while we're figuring out the settings. Uh, you can go to dogs-welcome.net. You can also search for Dogs Welcome on Facebook and Instagram um, and connect with her, follow her, um, go to her website, search for properties if you're looking to travel this summer. Um, How's that? Oh, good. That's better. Okay. All right. Let's Here's go for that. From being in <laughs> no, no problem. So Sarah, let's round back to the website for a minute. So if somebody comes to your website and they want to search for properties, where about, you know, where do you list properties? Is it just in New England? Is it all throughout the U.S.? Yeah, the entire U.S. and Canada uh, oh, is, wow. where is included in, in the website. Um, the You can search by state. Unfortunately, the website um, filter that I'm using uh, does not allow you to search by city within a state. So you will have to do a little bit of work. But again, you've got those filters to help you with your dog amenities. So hopefully that makes up for the fact that you're not able to filter by city as well. Um, but yeah, all of North America and Canada. And I've got at, at this stage of the game, there's a little over 300 properties on the website. There are more hosts in the group than then there are uh, people who have listed on the website. I think just some people haven't gotten around to posting their properties. It is free uh, to list for hosts to list their properties as well. Um, so I always tell people if you're doing a search, if you're looking for something specific to not only search the website, but also post in the group as well, just in case there's a host that maybe fits what you're looking for that hasn't gotten around to getting their property up on the website yet. Yeah, and you have over 6,500 members in your community now, so you definitely have grown fast. And, I, you know, I've been watching. You've got a lot of people sharing and asking and looking, and, yeah, so a lot of action. Yeah, and there. actually, that slowed down. The busier time, it's actually slower now. Spring was really busy because everyone was uh, for their summer vacations, yep. and now everybody's kind of got those squared away, so now it's kind of a little bit slower. Um, people, like, I think, have school starting back up again on the horizon, so they're not thinking about vacations quite as much, but I, it'll pick back up again after school starts. Again, not that it's dead in there, as you know. Right. <laughs> it's not dead, but it was even busier in the spring when everybody was starting to look uh, for their 
their summer vacation. Yeah, and get planning. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Well, I, I know you have another level too to listing. Um, it's called a certified property. So does that go like a step beyond and even, you know, they're even more dog friendly than those other search factors that you had? Yeah, I think so. So this is my definition. The certified properties was an opportunity for me to define what I think truly welcoming dogs is. Um, it is also a way for me to financially recoup a little bit of what I put into the building the website because there is a fee associated for properties to become certified. Um, but the criteria for becoming a certified property is that you can't charge a pet fee because again, as I've said before, I really feel like that is the first step in making someone feel that their dog is welcomed and not simply tolerated or allowed to be there. Um, they do provide, certified hosts commit to providing furniture covers or having leather furniture so that um, it's easy to clean up off of. Um, they pr uh, provide a pet first aid kit. I'm really big on safety in my short-term rental uh, for humans. So I thought, why not make sure that that is also applied for my dog guests as well. So certified property properties do provide a pet first aid kit. They provide cleaning supplies in the form of brooms or vacuums. Um, uh, things that we can clean, um, just regular cleaning products, but also like an enzyme cleaner in case someone has an accident in the house. Um, they also commit to providing bowls, boot bags, and dog towels, as well as phone numbers and contact information for not only local veterinarians, but also the emergency, closest emergency vet clinics. So it's just to me a little bit of a step up to say like, these are things I would be offering to my human guests. So I'm going to be offering them to my dog guests. And my hope with the certified properties program is to create a bit of standardization within the industry of what welcoming dogs actually looks like. Like, you, like so that people go, oh, you're a dog's welcome certified property. I know what that means, right? Yeah. I know yeah. what that means. And I, I know what I'm going to be getting when I'm booking with a dog's welcome certified property. I agree. And, you know, we're starting to see kind of an influx here in the industry of people taking a second look at people with their pets and mm -hmm. trying to understand better how they can cater to them. And I know you mentioned that you're starting to see some hotels and other places that are trying to, to, to change the way that they cater to this market as well. What kind of things are you seeing? Yeah, so hotels a lot. Um, I think there's always been a handful of hotels. They used to put you in the smoking rooms. Gosh, when I moved many years ago from the West Coast to the East Coast, we had to stay in all the smoking rooms uh, along the way with our dogs, which was awful, uh, to now being able to be in a regular room. Um, there are hotel chains that are dropping pet fees as well. They're providing bowls. They're providing goodie bags for their pet guests. There's a local hotel here in Bath that they didn't used to be. And now there's so many vacation rentals and another hotel here in town that is pet friendly. And I just noticed the other day, they've got a poop bag dispenser outside of their uh, <laughs> building now. And I checked online and they are taking dogs now. So the hotels have noticed, the hotels yeah. have noticed, they have the, those big hotel chains have the money. They, they do the research. So they know what the industry is looking at and, and they're looking for pet friendly um, experiences uh, when they're traveling. So yeah, hotels are getting on board. So this is a great opportunity for short-term rentals and vacation rentals to step up and say, Hey, I I'm going to do this. And not only am I going to do this, I'm going to do this at a standard that says I am a dog's welcome property. Yeah. And, you know, you and I were talking a little before going live about the short term rentals. You know, if you're on Airbnb, you host your own property or on on your uh, on your property or a property yeah. um, for people who travel with dogs that may be uncomfortable in a hotel or a campground or there's breed restrictions or there's temperament restrictions. So I know your property and my property cater to people who um usually can't travel with their dogs because of that. And, you know, the, the, we've had a lot of people this summer um, with their reactive dogs that just really appreciate the, the serenity, the, the calmness, the relaxing nature, the ability to run in a fenced in area. Um, are you seeing that with your property up in Maine as well with people yeah, traveling I, with reactive dogs? 
Yes, absolutely. I get a lot of people who will contact me uh, prior to booking. I do most of my bookings are done directly through my website, although I am on Airbnb and Vervo. Um, but I get a lot of people who will contact me prior to booking and ask about proximity of neighbors and whether or not there are other animals that their dog may see uh, walking like in front of the house type of thing while they're staying. Um, yes, luckily, I have a very rural location where my property is in. And there's very minimal um, humans or, or other dogs. There's a lot of deer, <laughs> but um, but there's very minimal uh, people or other dogs. So it's very easy as a reactive dog guardian to be able to stay there. I did consider um, somehow trying to figure out a way of adding that as a filter on the website. But I think that that is a criteria that could be it's hard to it's hard to demonstrate that you are reactive dog friendly. What what might be reactive dog friendly to one dog might not be to another. Exactly. Dog. Um, but what I but what I did do on the website that I think is really helpful that isn't always given to as an option on uh, when you're searching through Airbnb and Verbo is I do give direct access to the host in the form of posting their email address. So you do have the host name and email, direct email, not messaging through an app, but direct email address. So if you have any questions about the property, you can email that host directly Ooh. and ask if that property might be appropriate for a dog who's uncomfortable around other people or other dogs. Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, we've got someone watching. Cindy's got a comment. She says, I appreciated that the dog rooms I stayed in had a door directly outside, easy to go potty, not have to go through lobby, also, one in Brunswick had a fenced-in area for dogs. Yeah, that's I love the fenced-in areas. That was a big draw for us before we listed ours. And then what we did um, over and above the Airbnb, now that we had the fenced-in area, we listed that on Sniff Spot. Mm -hmm. so we're kind of running both uh, areas. And we have three reactive dogs ourselves, so we've got all kinds of visual blinds and barriers and everything set up so that when people come to the property, our dogs still feel comfortable and other people can come with their dogs and feel comfortable. Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. Wow. they I can't believe they had a hotel with a fenced in area for the dogs. That's yeah, wonderful. I know. That is wonderful. That's really a step above. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cindy, you might need to share that location with us. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sarah, before we go, you had mentioned you're seeing uh, some property scams and different things happening in the industry. Can you share any tips and best practices with us for people for safety reasons? Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, just like in any industry, scams can go ahead and pop up, especially when you're dealing with any sort of social media platform. Um, I always just, I vet, you know, I look anything that I post on the website, I'm always checking the link first uh, before I'm posting it on the website. But any, and this goes for any group, not just my group, but any group where you're looking to um, connect with a host um, about renting a property is just verifying that that is in fact the person who has the right to rent out that property, whether that's an owner or co-host. Um, there are people who will steal pictures off of the internet, create fake profiles for properties, take your money, and then you have nowhere to stay. Um, so just verifying that the person who you're communicating with does in fact have the right uh, to be running out that property. That can be done by calling the town office where uh, the property is located in, uh, and ask for the owner of the pro who the owner of the property is. That's public information. You can ask the um, host that you're communicating with if they have a um, social media presence, so a Facebook page or an Instagram Instagram page. Look at that page. See if there's reviews on there. See how far back it goes. If it was just created within the past week or two, that could be a potential red flag. Um, ask to see photos that a, only a host would have. Right? It's easy to pull those professional photos off of someone else's listing, but you know, maybe ask to see a cell phone shot that they took or a video that they took themselves of the property, and also just being very cautious before sending. Um, money through any of these apps like Venmo um, or Zelle. Um, I usually say that using a credit card for transactions is probably the safest route to go uh, when you're uh, booking something along these lines. There are good hosts. I will say there are good hosts that will that do take Zelle and they do take Venmo. So do do your due diligence if they are asking um, for that as a form of payment. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to scam your money, um, but often scammers will ask for money that way. 
Yeah, those are all really good points. Mm -hmm. And if you guys uh, do look up the Facebook community, uh, Dogs Welcome, uh, Sarah has a whole post that she's made there with all kinds of tips and resources and best practices. Um, you all have to just be really, really uh, on your game when you're traveling uh, with your dogs to these dog friendly places, because unfortunately there are so many scams going on as we know. So protect yourself as well. So Sarah, thank you very much for joining me. This has been great information. Thank I you. appreciate everybody watching us today. Again, go to dogs-welcome.net. Uh, that's probably the easiest. And then from there, you'll see Sarah has her links to her social media on Instagram. She's got her Facebook page. She's got her Facebook community. Join the community. Lots of great information in there, not just uh, properties, but also uh, great tips that Sarah sh shares with people. And if you're ever, ever up to the Bath area, look up Little White Dog Properties and uh, see what Sarah has to offer. <laughs> yes, <All right>. stay. <laughs> well, thanks for being my guest today, Sarah. I appreciate it. Thanks everybody for listening on your lunch hour and uh, have a great rest of your day, guys. Thank you. Take care.